who are to be the rulers and who their subjects. The best rulers will be those who most have the character of philosopher guardians. To this end, they ought to be wise and efficient. There must be a selection. Let us note then those among us who in their whole life show the greatest eagerness to do what is for the good of their country and the greatest repugnance to do what is against its interests. They will have to be watched at every age from youth upwards in order to see whether they preserve their resolution and never under the influence either of force or enchantment forget or cast off their sense of duty. We must make them perform actions in which they are most likely to forget or to be deceived since only he who remembers and is not affected by pleasures, pains, or terrors is to be selected. Such a one is more thoroughly proved than is gold which has been tested in the refiner's furnace. He will always bear himself nobly, for he has a rhythmical and harmonious nature. He shall be honored in life and in death with the greatest memorials of honor that we have to give. But he who fails must be rejected. I think that there might be a reform of our state if only one change were made. This change, though possible, is not easy. Yet the word shall be spoken. Until philosophers are kings, or the kings and princes of this world have the spirit and power of philosophy, until political greatness and wisdom meet in one ruler, and those commoner natures who pursue either attribute to the exclusion of the other are compelled to stand aside, Cities will never have rest from evils, no, nor the human race. Then, only then, will our state have a possibility of life and behold the light of day.